hi everyone welcome or welcome back to another video today we're going to be making over this spare bedroom to our nursery this wall is where i plan on doing the accent wall and we'll have our dresser there i would prefer the crib there but unfortunately our bathroom is just on the other side of that wall and i think it's going to be a bit too loud for the crib so I'm going to put the crib right there and that's the dresser that I will be making over. So make sure to stay tuned for that video. There's really not too much damage, just a little bit on the wall that we're going to patch and sand. And other than that, there's just the baseboards that have a little bit of damage. They're not caulked, so we're going to definitely be doing that. You'll get a better finish when you do caulk things. I'm not going to be painting the inside of this closet just because I don't have enough paint and the inside's really not that bad and you won't see it anyways. I do have to clear out a bunch of junk still, but still tons of room. It's a really weird closet with that huge lip to climb up there, but that's okay. Let's get started. The very first thing that I want to do before I even touch this room is clean these windows and put up some window film. We're quite close to our neighbors, unfortunately, and they have a window right across from us, so I'd prefer to just put that window film up and then I can feel more comfortable opening up my curtains when I'm in the room. So I just quickly measured it and then I'm just cutting it about an inch excess because once we apply it to the window, we're just going to cut off that excess. It's better to have a little bit more than a little bit less. I did get this from Amazon, so I can link it below if you're interested in checking it out. I really like using this because again, we're pretty close to our neighbors, so it just makes me feel better that they can't stare right into our house. This window film is super, super easy to apply. You just put water on your window and then you put water on the side of the film that's going to be stuck on the window and you just get rid of all the bubbles, try and get rid of all the big bubbles. And it just, it looks really great when the sun shines through it. You kind of get like a little rainbow effect on your carpet. It's just something little, but I do like um, how it looks. It just kind of ties into the flower kind of theme that I'm doing. I'm not really doing like a huge theme, but I do want some flowers on the wall and things like that. So I think it looks really pretty. Once you get to the edges, sometimes it is a little bit easier to start with just cutting it with a pair of scissors to get it started. Because once you get right to the edge, even if you have a super sharp X-Acto knife, sometimes it just does not want to go through. So just have a pair of scissors handy. It can help cut off that little bit on the edge. I then did the exact same thing to the other side of the window and that is the finished product. So you can't see through, you can't um, see the neighbors on the other side. I think it looks really, really good. Now that we've got our window film up, I have my curtains wide open so I can see all of the dust on the walls. So I am cleaning the walls just using simple green all-purpose cleaner. And I've just got a dry Swiffer handle that I just put a rag on the end of it. And this works really, really great to be able to just give your walls a quick cleaning. Even if you're not using a cleaning solution, it's good to at least get any of the dust or fuzzies off of the wall before painting. It just ensures that your paint is going to adhere better. A lot of people probably don't clean their walls and their doors before painting, but it's so important, especially on the doors. If you look at your doors where they have these square and rectangle things on them, you can see the dust collect on the edge and you definitely want to clean that off before you start painting. And if you're using a degreaser, just make sure that you are taking a clean rag afterwards and wiping everything down. Just like with the doors, the baseboards and trim collect a ton of dust, so I would recommend wiping that down as well. After the walls were clean and dry, I had my husband put some spackle. It's just drywall putty on the spots that needed some repairing, and he sanded that off once it was dried. So I'm just using some primer to put on those spots. If you don't use primer on spackling or wood filler or things like that, you will be able to see that underneath of the paint. The sheen will be different and it will not look as good. You will definitely be able to notice it, so make sure you are priming any wood filler or spackling that you use. 
I really love these glove liners. I can reuse these one-time gloves multiple times and they're a lot thinner than using the reusable gloves. I do use the liners in there as well, but my hands are clean and dry. Now that our primer is dry, we're ready to paint and I am using Benjamin Moore's Regal Paint in the color Wickham Gray. I had this left over from when we painted our living room and kitchen, so it's all the same color, so I figured to save us some money, and I like this color anyways. We will just use this color. It is a gray but with a blue undertone. It's a really pretty color, and it's going to go in really well with the accent wall that I've got picked out. So I'm not too concerned about getting paint on the baseboard and trim because I am painting it, but it's still good to be careful and not get too much on there. And then I just cut in to the ceiling as well. The very first time I actually painted was our basement and I thought I had to tape the walls and the ceiling and it was a disaster. It's so much easier just to cut in than it is to use tape when it comes to the ceiling especially because we've got those textured ceilings and tape on the textured ceilings does not mix. So cutting in 10 times better and you can see how clean the line is when you're just taking your time and making sure you're just cutting in really well. When I'm painting a bedroom, I prefer cutting in before painting the walls with the roller. That's just the way that I do it. I don't know if that's the professional way to do it or not, but I find this works best for me. So you just wanna work in small sections when you are painting walls. Hopefully it reduces any roller marks and just make sure that you do load your roller up with paint more than you would think. Not that it's dripping, but you do want to make sure that when you roll that paint roller that you if your roller is not loaded up enough, you will end up with paint roller lines and just marks and the coverage will not be as even as if you were to have your paint roller loaded up fully. When I do the first coat, I do use the brush to cut in, and then my second coat, I usually just use the small roller because I don't need to get into the edges as much as when I need to do my first coat when the color is completely different. If you're using a darker color, you might have to use the brush. Sometimes I do switch back and forth. It all depends on how I'm sitting and what I need to do, but typically the roller is easiest. Now that my three walls are painted with the Wickham Grey, I am going to be taping off the walls that are painted with that color so that way I can get a really clean line with my accent wall. I find it's easiest to rip off small pieces of tape rather than keeping one long strip because sometimes when you're in like edges like this you can't really put the tape right up against the wall because the door trim is there but you can absolutely do that if you don't have that door trim there it is a lot easier doing it that way but i just rip off pieces and then i take some of that wickham gray so whatever color you have on the wall that's not the accent wall you're just going to seal that tape in to prevent any bleed through with your other color Speaking of other colors, I have chose to do the accent wall in Starless Night by Bear, and I'm trying this marquee paint for the very first time. It is a more expensive paint, and whatever I have left over, I was hoping to use for furniture, uh, but just keep watching and you'll see my review on this paint. Just like with the Wickham Gray, I cut in first and then I roll the rest of it. Since the coverage was pretty good on this paint, I do end up taking the tape off before the paint fully dries. This just prevents any paint from getting peeled off and ruining your finish. And then when you do your second coat, you just want to be really careful and cut in and just get as close as you can to that edge. So that way your paint line is just really, really perfect. When I'm cutting in, I do add a decent amount of paint on my paintbrush. I brush it just slightly underneath of the line where the ceiling and the wall meets, and then I really, really slowly work 
backwards to cut in and this works really really well for me this is in real time so that's how slow I'm going when I am cutting in backwards but I find having a decent amount of paint on the wall to work with and just cutting in like that gets you the perfect paint line now that everything's cut in I'm ready to paint the entire wall you want to work as fast as you can as well to prevent any paint lines um, but again you'll see my review once I'm done painting this wall it is not a very good one but just wait and see I'm gonna rant a little bit about this paint because I wanna give you my honest review. It's my first time buying this and the whole reason that I had bought this particular paint is because I heard really good things on Facebook groups about how you can use this for furniture. And I knew that I was gonna need quite a bit of paint for this wall being in a dark color and I wanted to use any leftover for furniture to save myself a little bit of money since I have to paint this anyways I have extra but I'm not impressed with it I'm it, I honestly just got really frustrated I know that one coat coverage I'm not surprised it didn't cover in one coat that's not the issue and it's really hard to tell with the lighting in here the issue is roller marks I've painted plenty of things I've painted plenty of rooms I've never had trouble with roller marks it dries too quick and the roller marks where it meets up you can see every single line and even the cut in I painted this wall I'm not even joking five times I should have probably stopped at three but I just I thought maybe I'll try this maybe I'll try this maybe it's me it's not me I just hate this paint I could not stand it not buying it again I contacted Home Depot and they gave me store credit so I went and I bought just their premium plus line for the wall and I only need a small little container because the walls are already dark I've used this paint before for the basement but the whole reason I bought the high-end top quality one is because I wanted to use it for furniture so we're gonna give this a try same color it's satin still because I didn't want the sheen to be different if I ran out of paint and we'll see how that goes I'll try and show you what I mean on the wall but the lighting right now it's not very bright outside and you can only see it in specific lighting which was just really driving me crazy if you're not happy with something you shouldn't just say whatever it's fine it is what it is because every time I walk into this room I get annoyed that I can see the roller lines so we're gonna give this other paint a try I'll show you what it looks like afterwards I'm not gonna bore you painting the same color over the same one but I'll try and show you what I'm talking about so you can kind of see it there you can see every single roller line and you can see where I cut in and that was the fifth time that I painted it every single time I tried something different so typically you want to work in small sections so I did a square a square a square a square and then I did the same thing on the bottom and when I did that you could see the roller lines all along the middle and then I had tried doing full strips really really quick from top to bottom top to bottom and you could see the roller lines from top to bottom there was no fixing it this paint is just not good they did say Home Depot said afterwards that I had already just decided 
I'm getting a different paint brand, or not paint brand, but I'm getting a different line of paint because they only gave me store credit. They said I could add water to the marquee and it would give you a little bit more working time, but I've never had to do that with wall paint before, so I didn't think about doing it and I'm just over it. We're using the Premium Plus brand. Wish me luck, fingers crossed. I'll show you afterwards. All my painting is finally finished on the walls. So now I am taping off where I'm going to put my caulking and you wanna put this tape just slightly about a fourth of an inch away from the trim and baseboard that's where I like to have it and you just slowly work in little sections I do not rip the tape when I'm doing it this way because I don't have anything in my way other than that one spot beside the door and you just slowly put your thumb on an edge pull the tape out and then push it against the wall right on where the tape ends. I hope that makes sense, but it just keeps your tape from messing up. If you're getting crinkles in the tape, you know your line is not straight. Instead of ripping the end here and ending up with a messed up line, I do use scissors and cut that, and that way it is perfectly square and I don't have to mess around with trying to get a perfect rip because you will see the caulking line. If it's not even, you'll definitely notice it. The caulking will show a very straight line like how I cut this tape. When you're doing the corners, it's best to just let the tape go where it wants to go. If your line is straight, then it will show straight when you go around the corner. So I don't rip it to try and match that up. You can see that I did touch a little bit of the darker paint on the baseboard and that's fine. The caulking and the paint is going to cover that all up, but you can see that the line is the same width on both the Wickham Gray and the Starless Night color. You can see how I hold the tape in order to get really clean, even lines when I'm against a darker color. So you can see that I hold my finger there and I press the tape right where the edge of the tape ends. And I just continue going along that way. And it is seriously perfect. You can see the width is the exact same throughout the entire baseboards. Now that we are done with the tedious taping, I am ready to caulk and I've had this caulking for quite a while. So this is the best way for me to make sure your caulking lasts a long time. I have a little nail that I stick in there and then I duct tape or tape around it and it keeps your caulking sealed and it was perfect. It wasn't dried up. You can use this multiple times before it dries up on me. I then proceed to caulk all around the trim and baseboards. I don't add too much. I'm not concerned about filling the entire corner with caulking. You're just trying to seal the cracks and then you just put a little bit there. I'm wearing gloves, preferably I like doing this with a wet finger, but I'm trying to wear gloves more. And I just take a wet paper towel and I smooth that caulking into the corner. We're not trying to fill it up completely where the tape and the door meets. We're just trying to seal the crack to give you a more finished look because we are going to be painting over top of this caulking, which is also just going to hide that one fourth of an inch. It's going to look really, really good once we take that tape off. And you can see with the dark wall, how little I do put on there. If you don't want your caulk to squirt out while you're not using it, make sure you just twist the end. At least that's what my caulking gun has. You just twist it to take the pressure off and then you won't have a bunch of caulking shoot out, which has happened to me multiple times because I forget, but try to remember because you want to make sure that you're getting your full use out of the caulking and you're not gonna waste any. You can see with the window, there is quite a large crack. So I do have to add definitely a lot more caulking to fill that crack. And then I just smooth it out again with the paper towel. 
If you need to add more caulking, you can. You just want to go over the whole piece again with the paper towel to smooth it out. But like I said, there was quite a large crack, so I did have to just add a little bit more. The caulking that I use is paintable within 20 to 30 minutes. So I started on the doors with the semi gloss. This is just leftover again that we used for our kitchen and dining room. I still have like three fourths of a can. So that's what I'm using. I can't remember the color. It's just a white. And so I started with the door first. I usually do the square and rectangle with the brush and then I come in and smooth everything out with the roller and to do the rest of the door. Once the door is done, I'm ready to paint around the trim and the baseboards. And with the first coat, I always just use the brush. And then I come back when I do the second coat, I use only the roller. Just because when I'm doing the very first coat, I want to get in the cracks and crevices with the brush and then I'm good to come back with the roller. So I did do two coats before I decided to take this tape off. Usually it's best to remove the tape when the caulking is still kind of wet, but I did the two coats back to back as soon as I could. So two hour dry time in between. And then this is real time of me taking the tape off very slowly to prevent any paint from peeling off with the tape. finally done. I had these curtains that worked perfectly with this wall. Matches really, really great. The wall is definitely better using the Bare Premium Plus. I did sand between the coats and I forgot to mention that I did try and sand between the coats with the Bare Marquee as well and it didn't work. So the wall it definitely looks a lot better. It's not perfect. I think that's because of all the layers of marquee that we used that sucked. So now we've got this and I think it does look a lot better. It's not perfect, but you can't see the lines nearly as much that were here. But I think it looks really good. You can see The line looks really, really good here where we taped off. And there's the boy, he's finally allowed in the bedroom now that the vents are all up. You can see how perfect the lines are with our caulking that we got. Looks really, really nice and clean. And that all looks really good. So I am very happy with how it turned out. I didn't bother taking the closet door off because it just seemed like a pain, so I just painted around it. And I did paint this off camera as well. Any little bit of paint that you might get on the curtain rods. I didn't want to take those out because I was worried if that they were mounted in with you know, the mounting screws, that if I took them out, it would then end up messing up the hole that was there. So I just left them in and any paint that I might've touched on it, I just took a cotton swab with some rubbing alcohol and cleaned it right off and it looks really good. You can't even tell that I didn't take them off. So, we're finally ready to start the nursery. My next project is a dresser that I'm going to paint that's gonna be going in here. So hopefully you guys will stick around and see that video once I release that. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video or you learned something new, make sure to leave me a like, comment, subscribe. It would really help my channel reach more people. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.